Hello everyone, welcome back. It's uh, great to be here with you again. And as I promised, this, uh, this week, week two, our first regular lecture, um, as I promised, I'm actually in the classroom, as you can see. I'm in our room. Um, I like, actually, I prefer to be here when I make the videos for you. Uh, feels more like, for more real somehow. Although, uh, it's very lonely in here and uh you know the desks are empty uh the classroom's nice everything's ready to go but you're not here and uh that of course makes me very sad i i wish you were here i much 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 prefer to be talking to you teaching you helping you face to face um for now we can't do that i'm personally hoping that we might be able to this semester we have to wait and see how things go. Things seem to be getting better, not just in Korea, but all over the world, there seems to be a feeling of improvement and let's, let's heap, hope that keeps going. Anyway, uh, great to see you again. Um, uh, welcome to our, our first real, it's week two, but it's really kind of like week one. It's our first week of actual study. Now, uh, I went to the copy center this morning and the lady there said uh, many of you have come in to get your uh, copies. Uh, I think she has a few remaining that she's made. So if you haven't got your copy yet, you can get it today. If she runs out of the copies, I told her that if more students need them, uh, to make them when you come in. So if you go in there and there's no copies left, don't worry, just order one and she'll have it for you as soon as possible. I, she's very fast and uh, very good. She, made, she did a great job. So some of you have the actual textbook and you emailed me, you say you got the textbook, I guess online, and the rest of you, most of you, I think got copies at the copy center. So good work. If you don't have it yet, uh, please go in today. I would recommend today. Uh, the work we do this week, you will need the book when you watch the video. And you must email me by Thursday with the work done. Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. Basically this week, uh, I'll give you more information later, but I need the email by Thursday at 5 p.m. If there's some problem, some reason you can't, maybe there's a problem you can't get to school, just email me right away and let me know. Okay, uh, let's begin. Um, first of all, it was great hearing from all of you uh, last week, got getting emails and welcoming you and uh, saying hello. Uh, uh, everybody did what they needed to do last week. And it sounds like all of you are excited to start our class. Uh, so am I. I love teaching this class. And uh, just remember, um, it might seem a bit difficult at the beginning, but don't worry, okay? Okay, it, everything will make sense. Just keep doing it, follow along, right? Uh, trust me on this. If it's a little tough at the beginning, it's because it's new. It's a new test, a new, uh, some uh, very um, academic English, but you get through it and, and what we'll do is we'll start a little bit high today and then we'll go way down to the beginning and work our way back up again. Right? And then you're gonna get to a higher level at the end. Don't worry about one class or one week. It's a 15 week semester and step by step, you're gonna improve a lot and you're gonna learn a lot. Hey, it's not a sprint, it's a, it's a marathon. All right, um, what else can I say? Well, uh, again, I think pretty much everybody remembered to email, uh, when you email me, your student ID number and the class number, okay? five, six, or seven. Uh, just always please do that. If you don't do that, it's very difficult for me to find you. Make it clear uh, each time you email me. Otherwise, everybody, it's great and we're ready to go. So, uh, open up the introduction part of your book to, uh, well, it's Roman numeral 18. Uh, now, Roman numerals are different. Maybe you haven't studied them. X, V, I, I, I. X is 10. V is 5. I is one, ten five one one one, eighteen. This would be Roman numeral eighteen. 
I'm going to explain uh, a little bit about the structure and organization of the test. And you can refer to this page um, uh, in, while I'm talking, it might help. Uh, and also you can refer to the notes. Um, every week on Monday morning, I will send you uh, class notes. And those notes will help you with the lecture. I strongly recommend you print them out in the morning and you have them while you watch the lecture. It'll, it'll make the lecture a little easier. I'll put key points uh, and I'll put um, some vocabulary, some expressions, uh, things to make it a little easier and help you. But you can always, you can also use the class notes, you know, to study, review, and prepare for tests. Um, this week, we're only going to look at TOEFL reading. Um, from next week, we will do reading and listening. When I'm giving you listening work, I will send you listening files. Okay, there's a CD-ROM set that goes with the book. You do not have to buy it. If you do, that's great, good for you. You can if you can order it and you want it, but you don't have to. I will send you listening files every week uh, to match the work that we will do that week. Okay, let's get uh, started here. Um, again, our class will focus on reading and listening. It's a beginner class. Um, we're gonna really focus on these because when you learn reading and listening, those skills you also need in speaking and writing. Remember, just like when you're a baby, right? You, you don't start writing, first you have to read then you can, from reading, you learn how to write. And you don't just start talking, no? You start making noises, but you don't really start saying words. First you listen, right? You have to listen. You listen to your family, maybe your doctor. You just listen to the people and you watch them and then you start to speak. Same thing. Listening and reading are the foundations of TOEFL. Uh, reading, the reading section has three Long passages, uh, each are around 700 words long, sometimes a little more. Uh, they're, they're not easy, they're, they're tough, and they're based on academic topics, okay? Academic topics that you might study at university, you know, anywhere, but in an English university because it's English reading. Uh, each uh, passage has 13 questions, okay? So 39 questions total, 13 times three. Um, you will have 60 minutes <clears throat> to finish this section. Now, it's not just one set of 60. You get 20 minutes for passage one. You must finish it after 20 minutes, done, that's it. Then you get 40 minutes for passages two and three. It, it sounds the same and it kind of is the same, but it's also not because you have to think differently about the time. You have two passages, and 40 minutes. Um, the important thing here is to be very careful with the time. This is really urgent. If you run out of time, that's it. If you don't answer the questions, zero, okay? Absolutely make sure you answer every question. Right? Even if you have to guess at the end, even if it's like C, 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 C. Well, okay, that's better than nothing. Blank is zero if you just wildly guess you get 25% chance of getting it right. 25% higher than zero. At least fill in every answer. Um, again, time is really, really uh, the most important thing. Um, the golden rule here is don't spend too much time on one question or one passage, okay? Don't waste a lot of time. All the questions are worth one point except the last one in each set. That's worth sometimes two, three, or even four. But anyway, don't worry about that now. It, just imagine that each question is the same. So if you spend 10 seconds and answer it, or two minutes and answer it, it's still worth one point. Okay? Don't waste a lot of time. Then if you waste too much time, you get to the end, you panic, and you run out of time and you, you leave questions blank. Okay, I'm gonna teach you some more reading strategies today in today's lecture. We're gonna focus on reading later, 
But just remember the golden rule here. Don't waste a lot of time on one question or even one passage, right? If you have 20 minutes, don't spend 16 minutes reading it and reading it again and trying to memorize it and read it perfectly. Your job is not to be an expert on the passage. Your job is to answer 13 questions. That's it, nothing else matters. Just those 13 questions, focus on them. Okay, you'll get a lot of uh, academic topics, you know, geography and history and science and a lot of science um, and so on, famous people, that kind of thing. Um, and it's very academic. And to be honest, you learn a lot. One thing I love about TOEFL reading is it's interesting. Right? You'll learn things. It's not just made up stories. It's not imaginary conversations. It's real, uh, real facts. So you, you're learning while you learn. All right, uh, so again, the timing is the most important thing. Watch the time, be very aware of it. We're gonna practice that in our class again and again and again. We're gonna, I'm gonna focus on it. I'm gonna make you focus on it because it's, because it's an absolutely critical part of TOEFL reading. Listening, listening section, uh, six passages, okay, six. Uh, two of them are short student conversations and four of them are um, longer, uh, maybe four to five minutes, maybe more. Uh, and they're more like academic. Hmm. Okay, let me explain the difference. Whereas the reading is all academic. Some of the listening ones are shorter and they could be just two students talking, talking on campus. Uh, about homework or um, schedules, but it's always university life talk. Or it could be a student and a professor uh, in the professor's office asking about homework or projects or you know, a question, or maybe a student's having trouble with the class. Uh, it could be a student and the, uh, uh, a staff member you know, maybe uh, trying at a bookstore or at the library or, you know, at some uh, university office, which is also student life. You get two of those and they're a little bit shorter. Uh, there will be four longer uh, listening passages like lecture. That's a common one, just professor giving a lecture. The lecture could be only the professor speaking. It could be professor and students, maybe a couple of questions. The students ask, or maybe the professor asks questions to the students. Um, it could be a small group discussion, uh, you know, students doing homework together, uh, preparing for a class or a project. It could be a teacher leading a seminar, but it's not a class, it's a seminar. It's a teacher and maybe three or four students and more like working together to learn things. Those are more academic. And you must pay attention to them like you would pay attention to a reading passage. It's academic uh, material, right? So it, you'll be learning things. Again, you'll be learning about you know, science, geography, history. You'll be learning real things while you study the, the TOEFL. Speaking. Uh, speaking section has six questions. Now, we're not doing speaking in our class, but I want you to understand uh, how it works. Um, 20 minutes, okay, it's fast. You think, wow, that's good, I only have to speak for 20 minutes. Yeah, well, that's true, but it's really complicated because you have to think fast, answer fast, and your answers must be very well organized. Okay, you don't get anything for just throwing words out there. It's like writing, right? You've got to be organized. You've got to make it easy for the listener to understand you which means you have to listen carefully, sometimes read carefully, and then think, and then answer. Two are independent tasks, just opinion questions, okay? There's not right or wrong. Uh, what is your opinion on this? Is this good or bad? That kind of thing. Okay, again, what is the key? Well, of course you wanna use good sentences and whatnot, but organization. Don't try to use big fancy words and big fancy sentences. Don't go out of your comfort zone on the TOEFL. It's much better to keep it simple 
and use what you know well. Use your strengths, not your I don't knows. Use your strengths. Of course, having you know more, better uh, sentences, it sounds better, it sounds higher level, but the worst thing you can do is try to sound higher than you can do comfortably. Stay in your zone and do it really well. Think well, organize well, Think, uh, uh, speak in complete, clear sentences. This is what's really important. Go with what you know. Same thing with integrated reading, listening. You'll read, uh, sorry, you'll read a passage, you'll listen to uh, people talking about it, and then you'll answer a question. Uh, do the, what you read, do the speakers agree or disagree with what you read or this kind of thing. And then listening and speaking, the same thing, but no reading. You'll just listen to a talk, uh, could be a, a, a discussion, it could be one person talking, and then you answer question, a question, uh, two questions about that. But it, what you notice here is that with the speaking uh, section, reading and listening are essential. You cannot do it without good reading and listening skills. That's why reading and listening come first. TOEFL writing, next page of the notes. Uh, the writing section has two essays. You'll have 60 minutes to complete writing, all right, 60 minutes. Um, one is independent, same thing like with the speaking, you just answer your opinion. Um, this, the, your university was given a gift of, uh, you know, uh, 10 million or 100 million dollars. Should they build a new sports field or should they build a new library? Which one, why, so on. There's no right answer, no wrong answer. There's your opinion and your thoughts and how well you organize them. One indica integrated read, listen, and write. Again, reading and listening are part of writing. Okay, you're gonna read a passage, you're gonna listen to some discussion about the passage and then answer a question based on what you read and what you listened to. Now, you have one hour. That doesn't mean uh, just write for an hour, please, no. Writing is all about organization, okay? That's the key. Anybody can throw words on paper, even some nice words and some big words and some good sentences, but your job is to organize your thoughts well. That's what they're looking for, right? And now, how do you do that? How do you write well? The first step is to read well, okay? I'm gonna teach you what to look for when you read. I'm gonna teach you how academic reading, or how you read academically by teaching you how, they, how academics write you know, you learn how people write and you learn how to be a better reader by knowing how academic writing is done. And from that, you use it, you apply it to your own writing. How do you become a good writer? By being a good reader first, learning from people who write well. This is what we will be doing all semester. Okay, again, organization is the key. Also, don't just, don't think, okay, 30 minutes, one essay. Right, 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 right. No, never, okay? I call it the 525 principle. Read the question, take five minutes, write down some ideas. Just throw all your ideas on the paper. Write them down, look at them, and organize them. Never just start writing. Think, make a plan, organize. Then write for 20 minutes. Write as much as you can, as well as you can, as well organized as you can, based on the ideas you came up with in the first five minutes. Then, five minutes review. Nobody writes a perfect essay. Your professor, me, nobody, a professional writer, everybody makes mistakes, everybody changes things after the first draft, okay? Look at it, you'll see, oh gee, that doesn't make sense, or, I spelled a word wrong, or the grammar's bad, or I don't like how this connects, or whatever. Those five minutes at the beginning to organize and those five minutes at the end to review and edit and fix, those make or break the essay. They will, I can guarantee you, they will make a difference in the score by at least one point. And writing is out of five, so one point is a big deal.
Okay, 525, all right? But we're not gonna do actual writing, but I do want you to know, have some idea of how you can be a good TOEFL writer. Okay, again, organization, right? A well-organized essay that's a little bit simpler, maybe not, you know, you don't use a lot of difficult vocabulary or sentence structure, but it's very clear, very easy to read, and very well organized. This is better than using complicated sentences and grammar and vocabulary, but not making any sense. Your job is to make the reader understand you and your points. That's number one. Scoring. Each section is 30 points. Four times 30, 120. Obviously, they scale, right? There's 39 uh, uh, questions for reading, but you're given a score out of, uh, out of 30, uh, and so on and so forth. Speaking, each point each is worth zero through four, uh, and writing is zero through five, right? Zero, basically you write nothing or almost nothing. Five is not a perfect essay, but a perfect TOEFL essay, or as high as you can get on TOEFL. And then those scores are given a final score out of 30, and your entire TOEFL is therefore out of 120. But what does that mean? Exactly, like what is that score? A lot of students ask me, uh, what do I need? You know, what, what score do I need to go to a university? And really there's no answer to that question. But um, if uh, most people study TOEFL because they want to study uh, at an American university or maybe a Canadian one or something like that, great, okay, good. Some of you maybe want to do that, I hope so. And I, 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 wish, I wish for you that it'll work, that you have that opportunity, and this is a good first step. TOEFL is giving, it's showing your academic English abilities. What do you do in university? Well, you listen a lot, you read a lot, and you speak and write a lot. So the test is to determine whether or not you can be a university level student at an English university. There's no exact score. Uh, you know, there's a lot of competition now. Some top schools, they might require a perfect score of 120 because so many students are doing that well. Um, lower level, medium and lower level schools, you know, maybe 190. I, I personally think if they, they accept scores under 80, I don't know if anybody does. If they do, I would say it's probably not the best school. Um, but um, the other thing is there's other factors. Uh, a lot of schools want a TOEFL score, but you know, depending on your, your university grades or maybe you've done some research or some other work, or maybe you have some skills, um, you know, like musical skills or art skills, those will help. So it, there's really no exact answer to what TOEFL score you need. Finally, you need to check the schools. Every school has their own policy. It's not a national policy. So when you want to go to a U.S. university, go online. Go to their website, International Student Admissions or Admission Requirements, and check it. Check TOEFL score, but check everything else. You have to, maybe you have to write an essay or you know, send some, maybe send a video introducing yourself. There could be things that weigh as much or more than a TOEFL, actual TOEFL score. But you must go to the website, check the, each university's requirement, and take it from there. So how do you prepare? Well, first, take my class. That's a good start, okay? It's beginners, TOEFL. Again, if you have no prior knowledge, you're in the right class. Okay, study well in advance. Yeah, don't, don't study a week before the TOEFL. No, give yourself, I, I say three months minimum. This is a big test. It's kind of expensive. It takes about four and a half hours. Wow, four and a half hours. That's a long time. Um, so it's a big commitment. Now, you're not working for four and a half hours. It's, that's including breaks and so on and so forth. But the whole thing is gonna take you four to four and a half hours. So you wanna, you wanna give your energy to this, okay? Not a week, not a month, three months. It's not a race, it, it's not a 
certainly not a um, sprinting race, it's a marathon race. So think of it as a three month race, right? Um, what I tell students is uh, five or six days a week. Okay? Don't study all in one day. Don't say I'm gonna study six hours every Sunday. Or, no, no, no. And don't study more than two hours at one time, really. I don't recommend it. You notice most classes are only two hours long. That's enough. After two hours, your brain starts to go to different directions. You lose your concentration. It's everybody, I'm the same. We, we're all like that. And your, the quality of your study goes down. So I say maximum two hours a day or two hours a day with a break in the middle. Maybe one day, Monday, do two hours of reading. Tuesday, do two hours of listening. Wednesday, two hours of uh, speaking. Thursday, two hours of writing. Uh, Friday, review everything. And then Saturday, maybe do some practice tests. And then Sunday, nothing. Take a break. Take a walk. Visit your family. Whatever. Hang out with your friends. Take a day. Take a break. So, if, you know, six days a week, that's enough. Don't overdo it. Because then you burn out. Again, don't just cram everything in in one month, seven days a week, six hours a day. Ugh. Take it, take it like a marathon, a nice pace for three months or more. Okay, step by step. This is how you build up step by step. Hmm. Um, exposure to a wide variety of English. Okay, it's academic English, but uh, what what can you read about? You know anything really? Okay, read the newspaper. That's academic. It's a different style of writing, but the vocabulary, the expressions, the topics, okay, they could be on, on uh, TOEFL. Um, newspapers, uh, listen, watch the news, watch movies, TV shows, listen to music, all of that. Okay, it's all English. It can all help. Of course, study real TOEFL. Practice real TOEFL tests, study TOEFL. But while you're doing that, um, expose yourself to English, uh, things that you like, maybe your major, read a magazine or an online article about your major once a week, or a newspaper article or a book, uh, or about a hobby, something you like, you know, you like sports, great, read about sports in English. All of this is helpful. This is English exposure. It's all natural, everyday English, and you could find you might learn vocabulary or expressions that will help you on the TOEFL. Um, academic skills, okay. Academic skills are critical. Reading and, no and note taking. Okay, reading, we're gonna talk about this today and a lot during the semester. Re there's, there's different kinds of reading, just like in Korean. You don't read everything in your own language the same way, okay. When you read an academic textbook or, or um, academic, uh, article, you, you read it differently. You don't read it like you read a, a letter from your friend or a book or something. Okay? We're going to learn that academic reading is critical. Note taking is academic listening. Okay, You listen the way you read. You listen academically. You listen for key points. You listen for organization and you organize your notes based on the main points of the lecture. Again, Rome wasn't built in one day. You know, we're not doing all this today. We're doing this little by little, step by step during the semester. It'll all come together with practice. Do not be intimidated. So it sounds like a lot now. Mm -mm. It's gonna be little by little. It's all gonna build together nicely over the next semester. And don't forget that the, the test is testing your knowledge of English, of course, your academic skills and your knowledge of TOEFL. How do you get, gain knowledge of TOEFL? You're doing it right now. You practice, you take, take a course, listen, learn, but practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the more you get used to the style, uh, the more you get, oh, you know, you recognize wrong answers quicker, you recognize the questions, what they're asking better. Your knowledge, your confidence in the TOEFL itself is a big factor on the test. And that's something that we're gonna do a lot of this semester. And that comes with practice, doing your homework, getting the job done. Okay, that's the TOEFL test. And in this class, we're not going to take a complete test. No, you're not gonna sit down for four hours, four and a half hours and write a test. Uh-uh, no. Uh, 
uh, we're going to focus on reading and listening and we're going to build it. We're going to do, you know, a lot of hard work and then we're going to try to, it's like building a house. Okay. You can't build the top floor until you build all the floors underneath to hold it up. And today we're going to start with some foundation exercises. Go to page eight, regular eight. Okay. The number eight that you all, you already know, everybody knows. And look at strategies for reading, please. Um, we talked about this, um, three passages, uh, 20 minutes for the first passage and 40 minutes for passages two and three together. You have to be really careful with two and three, right? It's so easy to spend a lot of time on two. You're, you're focusing on it. You're, oh, you want to read that sentence again. You want to get, ah, oh, you do a great job. You get a lot of the answers where I feel good about passage two. Great. And then, uh-oh, I've only got like nine minutes for passage three. Now you got to rush, you got to panic. And all that time on passage two to get answers right is now hurting passage three. And it kind of like defeats the purpose, okay? Focus on time, get passage two done in time. Get everything done in time so that you're not rushing at the end. That is so important with TOEFL reading. Timing, timing, timing. Also remember each passage tends to get a little more difficult. Okay, the general rule is passage one is the easiest, then two, and then three. So if you don't have a lot of time for passage three, now you have the toughest passage, less time, probably tougher questions, or at least as tough. Okay, timing, timing, timing. Okay, not today, not this week, but on the real test, it's important. How do you get there? By practicing with me and on your own week by week. Um, now, the question types, uh, vocabulary, pronoun, reference, don't worry about that now, okay? Our textbook is fantastic. I love this book. That's why I'm using it, even though we can't buy the actual book. It's a great book. It organizes reading and listening into question types. Each chapter in the book is one type of reading question, focusing on the question type, vocabulary, chapter one, vocabulary questions. How, what do they look like? How do you find them? What, how do you know the wrong answer? How do you know the right answer? So don't worry today. We focus very deeply on each question type. Strategies, number one and two, yeah. Okay, the directions, you can read them this week. You can read them anytime you want this semester, but you should not waste time and energy thinking or reading, thinking about them or reading them on the test day, right? You know, by the end of our semester, you'll pretty much be familiar with them. Number three is really important, really important point. Do not worry if a reading passage is on a topic that is not familiar to you. Okay, this hurts a lot of students. They look at the title, they go, mm. you know, they go some scientific thing, uh, you know, extinct animals from Africa, or I don't know, something that you never studied. Doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter if you don't know. Now, if you're an expert on these extinct animals and you've done a lot of research, of course that can't hurt, that'll help you, but that doesn't matter. What matters is your ability to read the passage and answer the questions. All of the information is in the passage. Okay, if the title of the passage is tropism, what's tropism, do you know? Doesn't matter. I'll tell you two reasons why it doesn't matter. One, you're going to learn about it when you read anyway, and all the info on tro tropism that you need is in the passage. All the answers are there. And secondly, here's a, a quick clue right now, first week. When you see a very scientific title, what does that word mean? You're going to learn it right away. First sentence, at least the first paragraph. The writer or if you're listening, the professor speaking, will give you the meaning of that word. So you know right away that's a key word, it's the title. Find it, focus on it, you're gonna look for it right away. What is tropism? Boom, there it is, first sentence. Got it, okay, All right? Don't panic, the meaning is there, the definition is there, the answers are there. Uh, don't spend too much time, yeah, don't waste time like reading. Don't read it like you're trying to 
read every word. I get it. I do the same thing. I read a sentence, like if I'm studying Korean, I go, oh man, what is this word? Read the sentence again. I want to know this sentence perfectly. I want to get it. Yeah. But if you spend, you know, 14 minutes reading the passage perfectly, and now you have seven minutes to answer 10, uh, sorry, 13 tough questions. Oh, Okay, again, your job isn't to be an expert on the passage. Your job is to answer those 13 questions. So what do you do? Five, skim. Here's what I do. Here's what I do. Read the title. Read the first sentence of each paragraph carefully. Understand the title. If it's a scientific word, find it in the passage. Skim, find the word, find the definition. Absolutely. The first sentence of the whole passage introduces it. There's always a question about the first sentence, the main idea, uh, the gist, the main idea of it. What, what's this all about, the main subject? That's in the first sentence almost always. The first sentence of each paragraph tells you how it's organized. Paragraph two is about mo mo mo. Paragraph three, mo mo mo. Paragraph four, mo mo mo. Now you know the key points through it the key points, how it's organized, and where to find answers about each topic in the essay. It'll take maybe two minutes. Read the first sentence of each paragraph. Find the, the thesis statement. That's usually the last sentence of the introduction. Read that one too. Now you've got a strong, strong uh, understanding of the organization and the key points. Now you're ready to go then go start looking at the questions, right? If you have the main idea, the organization down from reading about five or six sentences, maybe seven sentences and understanding them, you can now answer eight of the 13 questions, guaranteed, maybe even nine. Get them done, boom, 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 boom. Got it, got it, got it. Now you've got four or five questions left. Okay, they're a bit tougher. Wow, I have 10 minutes. Eight minutes, nine minutes, eight, nine, ten minutes to answer four or five questions. Now I can spend a couple minutes on each question if I want. Now you've got the easy ones out, get those points down, and then the tougher ones, okay, take some time. But don't waste time on the tough ones so that you miss the easy ones. No, point, 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 get your points, and then spend your time. Points first, time second. Uh, number six, don't worry now about the type of question. As I said, each chapter in the book will focus on each question type. Number seven, very important, choose the best answer to each question. Okay, you're thinking, yeah, of course. Hmm. But it doesn't say choose the right answer. It says choose the best answer. You will not always get a perfect right answer. You will get confusing questions, confusing answers, like, you know, none of these are kind of exactly right. Mm. Think of it like a competition, right? There's four, there's A, B, C, and D. There's four possible answers. You choose the best one, okay? Well, A, no, A is terrible. B, I don't think so. C and D, yeah, C and D are both kind of okay, but kind of not perfect. But I think C makes more sense than D. Sounds better, I'm gonna answer C, okay? The best answer, do not get confused if nothing is perfect or they seem similar. One of them is better than the other three. Even if it's not perfect, even if it's not exactly right, it's better than the other three. That's the best answer, that's therefore the right answer. Number eight, don't spend too much time on a question, right? One a question, or a passage, don't waste a lot of time. It's not worth five minutes to research the whole passage and look for one, no, no question is worth five minutes, okay? Get the answers down to the ones you know, a lot of them you can do quickly, then judge your time, balance your time, uh, organize your time, and then think, okay, I can spend two or three, two minutes on this question, maybe a little more, because it's going to take some time. Yeah, some questions questions require more time and looking deeply, but a lot don't. Get those ones done. Monitor the time carefully. Yeah, of course, watch your time carefully. And number 10, guess. Guess, absolutely, right? 
I mean, there's no penalty for guessing. It's either right or it's wrong. If it's blank, it's wrong. Don't leave it blank. Just A or C or whatever. But in my class, if you work hard, do the work, listen carefully, and just practice, you're gonna learn how to guess better. Right? Educated guess, okay? If you just kind of go uh, D, and you got a 25% chance. But by the end of our semester, you're gonna be able to go like D is wrong and C is wrong, A, A B, B. Now it's 50-50. 50-50 is better than 25. Hmm? Okay, but that takes time and practice and experience. Okay, guess what? We're gonna practice now. Finally, diagnostic pretest, page two. Now page two, there's the directions. You should read the directions on page two. It's pretty easy. Just read them this time or, you know, a few times this semester, just so that you're familiar with them. Uh, diagnosis, like tindan, tindan, when you go to the doctor. Um, the purpose of this test is to diagnose what's, what's wrong. But just think of it as practice, okay? It's really just a practice test for you so that you can get experience with a real TOEFL reading passage. Don't be intimidated. It's not easy, okay? It's gonna take time. Just do your best. That's all I ask. Do your best. Read it, answer the questions, and get back to me and tell me that you finished the passage and how long it took, okay? I want you to time yourself at home. Use your watch, your, 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 your phone, whatever, and give yourself 30 minutes and try to finish in 30 minutes. At 30 minutes, stop. If you didn't finish, okay, then you still have to go and finish it. But I want you to start getting comfortable with the timing. I want you to understand what 30 minutes means on TOEFL. How do you do that? By practicing actual TOEFL with the timer. You're gonna do this all semester. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at the diet, you're gonna do the diagnostic pretest. That's it, that's your homework, aggression. Okay, page three is the basic passage. Page four is the passage you need to answer the questions. You can see all of the, the shaded areas and this and that, page four. So that's the one you really need to use. Page four and then page five, six, and seven. 20 questions. The rule is 1.5 minute per question, including the reading. Full passage, 20 questions. 20 times 1.5 equals 30. You're going to give yourself 30 minutes. You're going to time yourself. If it takes more time, then use more time. But try to finish in 30 minutes. When you do finish, check your time. When you email me, I want you to tell me the time. So your homework this week is the diagnostic pretest aggression. Read the story, read the passage, and answer the 20 questions. Don't worry about your score. Don't worry, just only your time. See, you know, Professor Gray, I finished the homework and it took me mo 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 minutes. That's what I need from you by Thursday at five o'clock. Hey, and again, if it took more, it takes more than 30, you know, you're not losing points or failing the class. No, no, no. It's your goal to finish in 30, but then your second goal is to finish in however much time you need. And if it's tough, don't worry. Okay, I'm not asking for your score. You, this is not part of your grade. This is for you to get familiar, to begin getting familiar with TOEFL reading, okay? This is a high level exercise, okay? To give you an introduction. And then from next week, we're gonna go way down to the beginning and work our way back up again to that level. It'll all come together this semester. Just do your best. Okay, uh, if there's words you don't know, don't worry. Um, I'll explain it next week. So I'm gonna go over aggression. I'm gonna go over the passage in very, uh, in a lot of detail next week in our lecture. And I'm gonna go over the questions and answers next week. If anything's confusing or you get it wrong, doesn't matter, as long as, if you get it wrong, as long as you know why it's wrong and why, why you made a mistake, then that's a win. That's good. That's how you learn. Mistakes are great as long as you learn from them. That's how we all learn, because we all make mistakes. Okay, that's it. 
Um, now you know your homework. So yes, uh, up to page seven, read it. Tell me your timing. Get back to me by Thursday at 5 p.m. And when I hear from you, I'll email you back. And when you get my email back from me, that means I got yours. That means your attendance has been recorded and your, your homework participation has been recorded. If you're late, it, count, it counts as being late for class. If you don't get back to me, that means you are absent from class this week. Don't be absent, don't be late. You have three days, lots of time. I'll go over it next week. It'll all come together next week. Uh, good luck, good luck with the homework. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, if you have any questions or difficulties with the book or anything, just email me and let me know. Uh, good luck, everyone. Have a great week. Uh, get your work done, not just my class, all your classes. I hope it goes well, and I look forward to hearing from you uh, by email. Have a good week, everyone. Bye-bye.